Welcome back to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. On today's show, we have Dr. Uta Besenek, who is the technical manager at the Design Lights Consortium. We had a great talk about the health effects of lighting, and it is a serious concern these days in the lighting business. So listen to this one, folks. You're going to enjoy it. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by HighlightLEDLighting.com. Greggy, Highlight LED Lighting. That's right. And uh, the item we want to talk about today is your LED arc cob. That's A-R-C. C-O-B, Arc Cobb. And the reason I bring this up is, number one, from personal experience. I, I drive by a facility that's close to my house often at night, and I look at it and I say, that's one of the best lit parking lots I've done, our, our company has done. And it was done with these Arc Cobbs from Highlight. Uh, it's a, they're a shoebox fixture, and it's a 180-degree light, so it lays flat, but it can also be mounted up or base down. And it has 60,000 hour plus life. It has a free 20K surge protection involved with it. It's IP65 DLC listed, five-year warranty. It can come 347 volt or 480 volt. And the reason I like the Arc Cob is because it, put lights where it, it puts the light where it needs to be versus being lost inside the fixture. A lot of times people put a cob, a regular 360-degree cob in a shoebox on a pole, and that light bounces around inside of there and gets lost. This is designed to lay flat, kick the light out and down where you need it. So check that out. Highlight is it is cop. it dark sky compliant and all that? I would say if, well the fixture is the one that gets rated for it, but yeah, yeah sure. I mean it, it points the light down. So yeah, you know, nice light. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of those retrofit kits and that out there, you, you waste a lot of light inside the shoebox. So it's good to see highlightledlighting.com coming out with a real hot product like that. It's so needed out there in the in the in the world of the lighting retrofit guy. So go to highlightledlighting.com. That's H Y L I T E L E D lighting.com, baby. And of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, which is now under new management. More for that, more on that later. But for right now, we got Dr. Uta Besignecker. Uta Besignecker. I hope I pronounced that right. That's Dr. Uta Besignecker. Dr. Uta Besignecker. There we go. On the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. Welcome to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast, Uta Besignecker. Thank you so much. Thanks you had a great year. Hi, Greg. Hi, Uta. Thanks for being here. First, I'd like to ask you if you, where you did your studies. Where I did my studies, that yeah. is a long <laughs> story. I started, my background is architecture and okay. lighting design. So architecture in Germany and in Italy. And then I ventured to New York City for architecture. And then I worked in architecture and ventured into lighting design. And then I actually decided to go back to studying and I went to RPI in upstate New York to get a master's and a PhD in writing. Uh -huh. And after that, I worked for a small manufacturer. Um, and then about 10 months ago, I started at DLC. And why did, um, do you, first of all, do you know Christopher Kiba, Dr. Kiba? I he, don't. He works in Germany. You know, we interviewed him on Dark Sky. Thing. Yeah, we did, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I thought maybe you got your PhDs all know each other. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah. Uh, you have a PhD in lighting. Mm -hmm. From which institution in Michigan did you say? No, uh, in New York. In New York, York. Troy, New York. Um, New York? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's RBI. with Dr. Figueroa. Uh, yeah. It's with Dr. Yes, with Dr. Figueroa was actually my advisor for my master's degree. Okay. And then for my PhD, I did an interdisciplinary study. Um, so it was with the architecture department. Dr. Kruger, who was an architecture professor, was my advisor. And then Dr. Bullo from the Lighting Research Center was in my committee, and there were um, also other people in the committee. What do we actually know about artificial light and human health outcomes? Well, the first thing that I'm just going to stop you there is that no light is artificial. Electric light. It's, it's real light, right? It's just electrical sure. light. Um, what we know um, about electrical lights and health benefits, well, we are starting to learn a lot, right? So, um, so in 2001, the IPRGCs were discovered, which is the first photoreceptor in the eye. And since then, we have a lot of research interest and a lot of research um, energy sort of poured into 
looking at how lighting mediates not just the visual, but also the non-visual responses um, of light in the human body. Um, and so we do know a few things now. We do know that circadian entrainment, um, the main side gaber, is lighting. And we have a fairly good idea, not a complete idea, but a fairly good idea what type of spectrum and intensity sort of impacts that side gaber um, and, and modulates circadian rhythms and also um, what acute effects it has on alertness, um, what light we need to avoid so that we can actually uh, relax and sleep at night. Um, but then there are all types of other biological impacts of lighting um, that we don't know about, right? There might be something, there's something in ultraviolet, there's something in the infrared region, um, there are, um, uh, there is disinfectants um, that you could argue also contributes to health um, where there are studies being done. Um, so there is a lot going on in sort of the light health well-being aspect. And it's it's really exciting. And one of the reasons why it's a really incredible time at the moment is because LED technology um, allows us to customize light spectrum. Um, and and it's 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 sort of we can customize the light spectrum, uh, the sources can be digitally controlled. Um, so with that, there's the need for control algorithms. Um, so, so that comes together with, as I mentioned, sort of the, um, the invention of sensors. So we can actually um, research better what human responses and biological and physiological responses are. And then that also comes together um, with, um, now I lost my train of thought, um, this also comes together. We had the spectrum, we had the technology, controllability, had the oh, and the IPRGCs. And so this also comes together with that we are now having advanced knowledge and actually the physiological components of um, a, the photoreceptor, the eye, but also the hormone processes and how it actually influences our health and well-being. Are, are there more PhDs in lighting than ever before now? Yes, I think it's <laughs> I actually, like it. it's, a, it's a growing field. Yeah. I mean, when I started, as I mentioned, like I started studying architecture and uh, you couldn't study lighting when I started. Mm -hmm. There's no lighting wasn't. engineers. Well, they are lighting engineers. They are lighting engineering programs. Penn State, for example, has, mm. has one, right? It's, it's, it's a lot it's of times... It's always a division of electrical engineering. It's either electrical engineering or arch architectural engineering. Mm. So, um, but, but again, the lighting profession in itself is pretty new. Um, I worked, at, I was fortunate to work with Howard Branston um, for a while, and he is sort of the grandfather of lighting, right? So Sounds like he should be a guest on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, to do that. And uh, he's really sort of one of the, and uh, he studied architecture as well, um, and, and, but came also, but also theater. And so you have sort of these two areas where lighting people come from or traditionally came from, like the theater and architecture. But now what happens is that science caught up with it, right? So, so development of the LED um, technology and, uh, and the health sciences and all that is just so, sort of you, happening now. Yeah. i got a question for you. So, so you seem very excited about the potential and the possibilities in front of us, right? So we see ourselves at the other end of the business. Mm -hmm. So you are at the research end where, you, you know, new discoveries are emerging mm -hmm. and you're bringing them to light. We're standing in front of customers and selling them light bulbs. Okay. Yep. It, in my mind, it's not appropriate for anybody to be selling any lighting systems based on health outcomes at this point. Do you agree with that? Well, it's, Put it, um, 
health outcomes is always a strong word, right? Um, and I think it's sort of like supplements versus medication, okay. right? Um, I don't think you can, you should prescribe lighting. I mean, there are actually, I think there's, there, there's sort of a, there's actually a profession forming um, of um, medical professionals, believe it or not, that work with sports, with athletes, for example, okay. um, who sort of uh, look into, um, you know, their sleep and their performance and they are prescribing light therapy, right? Mm. Um, it, it's targeted to what these people need, right? I was talking at some point with um, the doctor who works with the astronauts. It sounds right, like when you NASA. go to the beach for the day or what? Like light therapy, is it like going to the beach? And I mean, what do you now, do light therapy? Well, it's, it's, for example, if you need to shift your clock, for example, um, mm -hmm. I think for everybody who just has a normal, regular day, right? Okay. Yes. You so should get up in the morning. Get up in the morning, take a half hour walk, right? Or go to the beach. Or if you don't have a beach, just walk outside. That's the perfect thing you can do. And maybe one after lunch, right? So that's in a way most without of the time. Without sunglasses on? Sure. With, yes. Without sunglasses on. Depends a little bit on the sunglasses, but yes, ideally without sunglasses. Now, but for example, you have regional differences, right? You have seasonal affective disorder. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are areas in, in, in winter where you just don't really have a lot of light. There are a lot of people who, um, who work indoors, right? They, uh, they leave the house. They, when it's dark, they are in an office. They don't have access to daylight. They go out, right? So, so they are, there are these applications where I think with electrical lighting, we can really help people um, support um, support the health and well-being. Um, I truly believe that. And um, um, But if we go to, um, and then there's night shift, right? Health, healthcare is a big, there's, there's a lot of discussion in healthcare um, as well, what can you do to support nurses? What can you do to support um, to support? Uh, Isn't the patients? answer to those questions though we don't know? For the for the particular, I think for the particular individual, it depends on the particular individual, and um, and some of it we don't know all of it. But I think we have enough idea to design a solution that that could support what the person needs or their biological rhythm. And you take your clues really from research that has been done, and you take your clues from the natural, um, just sort of how did we evolve? And what happens in the natural? So, so world. here's here's what here's a concern I have, and maybe this has nothing to do with what you can answer for. But my whole life, I've been told that the sun is bad for me, that I should wear sunglasses and sunscreen, mm -hmm. and that you know, um, and I'm I'm sure there's um, you know there's appropriate amounts of sunlight time and that, and you know, in our evolution as a species, there was you know people would not lie in the beach until they were completely brown, their skin was completely brown or whatever. But, you know, why is it that we have, you know, 30 plus years of science telling us that the sun is bad for our eyes and bad for our skin? And now that seems to be turning around and people are saying, you know what, actually we need the sunlight and people who live in condominiums that go down to parking garages and get in cars with tinted windows and put on sunglasses and drive, to other parking garages are actually and then get into an office building where they never get outside they never have sunlight are suffering from a lack of sunlight it's all a question of dosage i mean it, it really depends how much um at what in, it, it's like how long at what intensity at what time but if we bring that inside isn't it going to be the same issue isn't there going to be dosage issues of indoors 
There's right. always still such issues, for sure. Um, I mean, you will never, you will never really uh, get the 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 levels of light and radiation that you have outdoors are orders of magnitude higher than what you ever will have indoors. Hmm. Um, they are, they are, we just don't notice it, but because our eyes are so good at adaptation. Hmm. It's sort of like a like a um, camera's exposure control, right? Mm. So so indoors you're talking about light levels of I don't know like 500 lux, sure. right? Something like that. But how is it going to have an impact? Then? Well, every little bit helps, right? Mm. Again, you um, and there is. Do we have all the op- Answers like at what dosage level yeah. will you get what result and you're alert for how much time? No, you don't. So this is this the and we might not even ever get there, right? But we do know that if you reduce um the certain portion of the spectrum, um, which is sort of the 480 plus minus region, right? Mm-hmm. That this, uh, that sort of like this spectral region, um, sort of signals to your body, be alert, it's daytime. Mm -hmm. So if you reduce that, then you signal to your body, you can wind down, it's evening, it's, 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 it's a darkness signal, right? Mm -hmm. And with that, the hormone levels of melatonin rise. That sort of it, 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 it's triggered in our body, mm-hmm. and so um, I think even at indoor light levels we can support that, um, and 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 we can mediate it. Now, is that all that needs to happen? No, in order to feel comfortable and in order to 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 sort of support psychologically and mood and and and. Um, uh, and activity and nutrition and activity. Um, there's a whole lot of components that also contribute to, um, I don't know, circadian rhythms or if we are awake or if we can sleep. Um, so, so lighting certainly doesn't have like all the answers, right? Or, or effects. Um, but we certainly have knowledge now that we can start implementing. And when, if we start implementing some of these steps now, um, consciously and with education and, um, and, um, taking into account like good lighting design and everything else that we sort well, of need to Good take lighting into design account. makes people feel better. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I forget about, you know whatever. I mean, a well-designed space. Yep. And with a which lighting would be the heart of interior design and the lighting, right? Would make, possibly make people feel more relaxed or more at ease or just better because it's better designed. But how do you parse that out from the effect of new furniture? Or from like, how do you know what that it's the lighting? How would you know that it's the lighting? Without lighting, um, I have to think now again how it brands the Like a renovation. Um, a no, renovation sure. makes people feel better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A new desk, they have a new, because generally it comes in a renovation, right? Without lighting, you will not be able to see any of your sure. new furniture. Okay. So it's an interaction between the light and whatever your surfaces are. Mm-hmm. It, so, yeah, well, it makes sense. Um, so ten years ago, or ten months ago, you were hired by the DLC. You're the technical manager of lighting quality. Mm-hmm. Did they have that role prior to you stepping in? Not that I know of. So why did they uh, have that, or why do they have that role at DLC? Well, I think there is um, there is sort of an awareness and a shift in the industry in general. Um, to move um, the uh, now that LED light source adoption sort of is well and good underway, mm-hmm. to sort of move from 
um, solely efficacy-driven um, adoption to really focus on, okay, we need to look at um, the quality of light. Um, and efficacy has, um, it doesn't tell you the whole story, right? It doesn't really tell you a lot about the quality, the color quality or the glare quality or the distribution of a product. Um, it also only gives you, to a certain extent, rudimentary um, information about the energy efficiency of the lighting solutions in the space. So I think there was generally already an awareness in DLC that um, the, the policies and the requirements um, sort of uh, it would be good to add quality considerations to it. And so I was part of um, hiring um, a team. I was not the only person hired, right? We grew quite a bit uh, in the past 12 months to actually take that on and to sort of, in a way, do a feasibility study to check, um, okay, what are these quality considerations? Um, what is known in the industry? What are the quality of light metrics that are have been developed and are relevant? And how can this be implemented and be relevant for what DLC does? What do you see those metrics as? Um, I know efficacy is one. What are the other ones? You mentioned glare percentage. Is that what we're going to have labeled on products? Or is there something that I'm looking ahead down the road that we're going to start seeing differently than we see now? Well... As I said, like we just came out with the conceptual draft, number one. Mm -hmm. It's called conceptual draft for a reason, it's right? it's conceptual. It's conceptual. <laughs> okay. it was a, it's a feasibility study. We literally yes. just started with it like nine months ago. And what we passed out is really the first things to tackle are glare and distribution, color and spectral quality and flicker. Um, apart from controllability, which obviously is always sort of a big portion and that all sort of comes together in order to also make sure the energy efficiency um, is, is, is tight into it. But especially with, um, with solid state lighting sources and with what's going on sort of in the industry and, and all the new innovations, it is really important to look at um, but yeah, to, 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 to sort of um, start discussing with the, with the industry, um, how can we um, produce, uh, like, like come up with metrics for GLEA, right? GLEA yeah. control. Because at the moment, like the oh, most no. efficacious product is just a bare LED mm -hmm. um, and that is, doesn't have any distribution or GLEA control. For sure. And, um, and, and yeah, it, it, so, so this needs to be addressed, and we are addressing this now, and that's why we are all here, right, mm -hmm. at the stakeholder meeting. You have. I think it's an issue with um, trying to get your like you have a very scientific approach and, mm -hmm. and a humble mindset when you look at it. You're coming at it very carefully and pragmatically, and with a team, right? But at the other end of the business, where where I exist. There's people that want to sell based on this sort of stuff. Sure. They want to sell lights that are healthy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's problematic. I think that leads to a lot of issues. So what are, when you said they want to sell lights that are healthy, what, what did you mean? What do you hear in the industry? A sales guy wants to go, oh, what does the cut sheet say? It says health effect, 4% increase in 4% productivity increase, ma'am, says right here, sign. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. Right? Like you're talking about, like, they don't care. They just yeah. want to get their better money. sleep. <laughs> it's the question of the, yeah, return of investment, right? Yeah. Is, is a lot, right? ROI is a lot. I mean, like, I, yeah, I came across this a, a lot of times. I mean, efficacy is so easily calculated, right? Sure. Now, anything that sort of comforts well being. Who's to say what's what? Right. There are efforts in the industry, right, um, to to sort of come up with with ideas how to 
quantify to a certain degree um, what could these ROIs be for quality well-being health. I mean, the, the industry has sort of grappled with this for a long time. Um, there's sort of a new, a whole new revival across this. Mm. It's not something that we have solved now. It's, it's something, but, but it is something that every major organization has, um, has sort of a stake in and, and, and also is sort of working on. Um, I can tell you that much. And, and, that things will be happening and moving forward in the next uh, year. I a year. So you're gonna have a DLC healthy label that can go on labs. Like, like I did not say that. <laughs> like deal. So 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 DLC is not. We are not a standards body, right? So so we are not coming out with standards, right? Mm. We are not. We are not coming out with guidelines. We are referring to guidelines that have been developed by standards bodies like the CID, like the IES, right? Mm. That's why um, the, we, the idea of DLC is to have a qualified products list um, that certify products to specific criteria mm -hmm. Um, that sure are set out, um, but the standards for testing or the basis for what these criteria are and are sort of you know are um, discussed and developed not just by DLC but by the industry and based on other industry organizations. So are we going to see a DLC healthy? Well, not Maybe. in the near future. Not in the near future. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, okay. They could be specialty specialty categories. Um, it's okay. always an option. Well, Nita, thank you for coming on the Get Your Online Podcast. Thank you, Greg. Yes, thank you. Michael. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was fun to have you. HighlightLEDLighting.com. That's H-Y-L-I-T-E-L-E-D Lighting.com, Greggy. HighlightLEDLighting.com. They're coming out hot, buddy. They're making moves in this business. They are, and they've been one of the first to the market with a lot of the innovative LED product that other people are doing, and one of them is the Arcob. They're the first ones I actually saw that put this out that is a 180-degree light designed it can actually be horizontally mounted or mounted base up or down or sideways anyway. So universal burning position, I guess is what it should be called. And uh, it does a great job with over 140 lumens per watt. And DLC listed has surge protection, which you need in outdoor fixtures. And then it puts light where you need it versus uh, getting lost inside the fixture. Mm. And I have done a number of jobs with these and I mentioned it before, but I, I still want to reiterate that one of the best outdoor parking lot retrofits I've seen Premier Lighting do is with an ARCOB. So check it out. You know, isn't that called coefficient of utilization? I don't know if they use that word how, in LED world. Yeah, that's how effective the light is at, at getting out of the fixture, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. they use that, if that, that terminology is for fluorescent lamps and how much of like T5 has a higher coefficient of utilization than T12 and T8 and all that. But I don't know if that's really relevant. I think it's coming back the way they're doing the, the almost 360 degree LED tubes now. So they fill the fixture with light. Maybe a CU yeah. is going to be a relevant factor again in, in the, uh, in the LED world. Then of course, Greg, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. How exciting is it to be a member of that association right now, man? Whoo! No, it's the best. A lot coming out that we know pretty uh, a lot of detail about, and we're going to share more with that. But exciting times that nailed for sure. Yeah. So check out naild.org, baby. That's naild.org, and we're going to be coming out with some serious stuff from from the members uh, of Nailed. Uh, and of course, Dr. Uta Bessenecker, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, very gracious with your time. I know we had some audio problems with our time at the DLC, but I think it's worth listening to anyway. So if you're mowing your lawn or you're driving along or whatever it is that you're doing right now, and you're listening to this, we're very grateful to you without you, the listener, we would be nothing. So thank you. And of course, um, what else, Greg? Thank you, Greg. And thank you, Mike. <laughs> Keep it rolling. <laughs> Boom. That's get a grip on lighting.
Written on the rectory wall There's a sign there for all You are lost, Lord is there to find you 